Welcome back, fellow homunculi, gardeners, professional computer touchers. I'm on an inferior operating system once again today. Uh, this is lead code 7, reverse integer. This is not the optimal way to do it, but I think it's the most... Uh, it, it is an intuitive way to do it. Uh, as though the steps map like pretty lin like quite literally to uh, our propositions but there is a simpler way to do it with uh, I think it's log of X time with uh, linear space I mean with constant space this one's gonna be log of X time with log of X space but it is what it is <clears throat> so given a signed 32-bit integer X return X with its digits reversed if reversing x causes the value to go outside of the signed 32-bit integer range, then return 0. Assume the environment does not allow you to store 64-bit integers. <sighs> so we see that with 1, 2, 3, we have to return 3, 2, 1, which is reversed. Is that negative 1, 2, 3? Uh, we have to return, uh, we have to retain the sign, right, and just return, reverse the numbers, 3, 2, 1. We have x equal 1, 2, 0, and here was the third example we finally see, right, that if we reverse the number, right, we have to emit uh, uh, leading zeros. So there's going to be 2, 1. And obviously the reversal of any digit with one number is going to be the same, right? So before we even do anything, right, we know that the reversal of a digit that has one, uh, well, a number that has one digit is, this, is, the, is that number, right? So we can just get that out of the way right now. So we'll just cast x to a string, right, and we'll check that the string's length is equal to 1. If it is, we're just going to return x, right? So that's going to get rid of a lot of these little weird cases. <sighs> so what are the other things to note here, right? So we have this sign 32-bit integer range. And for those that don't know, this is how you define the range for a number represented with 2's complement. So the range is always going to be uh, 2 to the k, right? So 2 to the k, right, minus 1, or n negative 2. 2 to the k minus 1, 2, 2 to the k minus 1, minus 1. So what does that mean? So here we have, uh, uh, so we're rep represented with a 32-bit integer, right? And so our signed uh, range is going to be uh, 2 to the k minus 1, where k is the number of bits we're using to represent the integer. So we're going to use 2 to the 31. I mean, 2 to the 32 minus 1 is 2 to the 31, right? And then we get negative, right, whatever 2 to the 31 is, right? And that range, right, has to be uh, to 2 to the 31, right? So just 2 to the k minus 1, right? Minus 1, as you can see, minus 1 here. And you might be wondering, why do we have the minus 1 on the range? It's because when you're using 2's complement, right, we're saying that each number is going to be represented by the complement of the bits, right? So if we have 1001, we're going to say a negative number is going to be represented by the uh, complement of those bits, right? Which is uh, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, right? Plus 1. So we go boom, 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 boom. The problem with that, right, is you end up with two negatives, right? Why do you end up with two negatives? Because every number is going to be duplicated, right? Because of the most significant bit, right, denoting the sign of the number. So if that's the case, right, you could have... Uh, uh, positive zero and in a way you could have negative zero right so two's complement obviously it's more like going to it but uh, that's why the extra negative value is the extra value right is assigned to the negative uh, portion so that's why the front or the positive portion is missing one uh, number right so how do you go about this you actually don't need to do any of that to do this problem but <laughs> how are we going to solve this right so problem is basically asking us to reverse this integer, right? So how could we go about doing that? So we could go about doing this, right, in a more intuitive way, right, by just saying, uh, what if we just cast x to a string, right? And then uh, we can just uh, iterate over the string, right? And here what we're doing is we're trying to generate the string in reverse, right? And how would we do that? We'll just iterate over the string in reverse, right? and build the string right so if we're iterating reverse right we're just going to build the string in reverse and so we're just going to get uh one two three and turn it to three two one right but before we do that right uh we have to make sure right that uh if we're going to cast x to a string right uh we want to ignore the minus sign right 
because if we're casting it right, JavaScript is just going to allow it to be uh, eaten up, right? But uh, so what I mean by that, right? If we have negative three one two, right, and we iterate in reverse and reverse the string, right? It's going to be two one three. It's going to be a three two. Oh, I put the wrong three two one, right? It's going to be one two three negative, right? If we reverse it, right? So we don't want to include the negative, right? We'll just reapply the negative later on. All right, so we're going to iterate over the string in reverse, build the string, right? Once we've built the string in reverse, right? Well, then what can we do? So it's just asking us to reverse the number, right? And so we've kind of done that, right? We at this point, right, we have to make sure, right, that we get rid of any leading zeros, right? So if we reverse one two zero, we'll get zero one two, right? So if we can iterate through the string again, find first non-zero index. Right. Once we find the first on zero, right, what we can do is we can create substring excluding uh, leading zeros, and then we can uh, cast that substring right to integer right, and then we'll technically have done it right. But what do we have to do if we follow these set of steps right, except for a negative number, right? The answer here right should be uh, we reverse zero one two we get zero two one, right? And so we have to remove that trailing zero, I mean that leading zero, right? We also have to reapply the negative, right? Because we ignored the negative in the beginning, right? So that we could actually parse it correctly. So we have to reapply the negative, right? So we can just say reapply negative, right? Check if it's within the range of 32 bit signed numbers. And then if it's not, right? If not, return zero. Otherwise, return uh, x rev right and so that's how we're just going to do this so we're going to cast a string right to ignore the minus sign the minus sign i'll show you how to do that then we're going to generate the string in reverse right iterate through the string again to find the first non-zero index right so we can remove leading zeros then we'll create a substring excluding the leading zeros right cast the substring to an integer reapply the negative and then it's just a matter of adhering to the problem's requirements so if the the, if the number goes out of the range of the 32-bit uh, range sign 32 at range and we'll return zero and that's what we're going to do here otherwise we're just going to return x rev right so what can we do so first we have to cast x to a string ignore the minus sign right so we'll say let x string right equal to x dot to string right and then we're going to check the first character right i don't know we don't have to do that oh my god so we're going to say if x is less than zero right that would mean it's negative and we'll say x dot to string right and then we'll take the first index right to the end of uh, the string right otherwise what are we gonna do we're just gonna take the string as is right it's positive right so we're just saying if it's negative right then that means the first character when we cast it to a string is gonna be the negative sign we want to ignore that right so we're just gonna go to one right so now we just have to generate the string in reverse right so how do we do that right so we're just gonna say uh, uh, we're just gonna call this reversed string, right? And we're gonna do is we're just gonna create end. It's gonna be equal to x sub string dot length, and then uh, oop, length minus one, right? Because when you iterate in reverse, right, you're 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 uh, starting from the end and you're working towards zero, right? So what would you do? You would say uh, while end is greater than or equal to zero, right? Because we want to go in reverse here. And it's going to be a very simple while loop, right? And so we're going to iterate over the string in reverse. Let me put this up here so it's a little bit easier to follow, right? And then we're going to build the string, right? But since end is decrementing towards the center to the front of the array, since we're going in reverse, we have to decrement by one, right? And then on each iteration, right, we're just going to say uh, reversed string, right, is going to be plus equal. Uh, x sub string sub end right and that will reverse the string and then let me remove these extra variables so now we've reversed the string right iterate through the string again right and find the first non zero index so how would you go about doing that right so if we want to iterate through the string again right and find the first non zero index we'll just say hey let index right we'll call it non zero index Right, I'm mixing camel case and snake case here, that's my bad, but we're gonna say non-zero index, right? It's gonna start at zero. While 
And then here we're just going to iterate through the array, right, and find the first non-zero index, all right? So we're just going to check, right? If uh, x, uh, if now we're working with the uh, reverse string, right? Because we're we want to get rid of leading zeros, we're going to say reverse string, right? Sub non-zero index, right, is equal equal to uh, zero, right? Then what are we going to do? We're going to say non-zero index plus equal one, right? Why does that work, right? Because we're going to keep iterating while it equals zero. Once we don't equal zero, we'll stop, right? And so the other thing we have to do right is make sure that non-zero index, right, stays less than reversed string dot length, right? Because we don't want to go out of bounds. And then from here we can just create the substring excluding leading zeros, right? So we can just say, hey, let x rev, right, which going to be x reversed, right, equal to parse int. So we're going to cast it to an integer, right? And then what we've done here, right, is pretty cool because now we've removed the leading zeros, right? So all we have to do is just say, uh, uh, we can just take the substring, right, of the non-zero index to the end of the uh, string. Say reversed string, right, dot substring, right, to the non-zero index, right, to, and my camera might be blocking this. Oh, it's not. Non-zero index to, Uh, so the non-zero index, right, to reversed string dot length, right, boom. And then here we can just reapply the neg, oh boy. Here we can just reapply the negative, right? And so x rev is gonna be equal to, uh, if x was less than zero, right, our original what was passed into the function was less than zero, then we're just gonna say, uh, just set x, just Nate just uh, you know apply a negative sign to it right otherwise just return x rev as it is right and so here we have to check if it's outside the range of the 32-bit numbers right so we're going to say if right if it's outside of the first range if it's outside of the negative range right or outside of the positive range right then we're going to return zero all right so we can just remove this comment here and say return zero so how are we going to check if it's outside of that range all right we're going to say if uh, negative, right? So we're going to check the negative range first, right? Two, oh, actually, it'll be easier if we do this. If we say x rev, right? If x rev, right, is less than the negative of 2 to the 31, which they literally give us here, negative 2 to the 31, right? If it's less than that, right, then it means that it's outside of the negative range. Or if x rev is greater than 2 to the 31, right, minus 1. So if it's greater than any of those ranges, we're going to return uh, zero, right? And so this should x string sub lot like uh, oh boy dot dot string dot length. Oops, that's a property. Boom, and so we're good there. Radix. Let me see. String x to string dot. Hmm. Uh, small problem here. I think I put a small typo, so it should be x dot uh, two strings. So we're turning x to a string, right? Then we're taking the substring, right? Before it said radix, right? Because two string can be used to uh, transfer numbers. To different bases, so that's what it meant by that. But you're supposed to say x dot two string, right? Transfer it to a string, right? Then we're going to use, take the substring, ignore the first character because it's negative, right? And if we click submit, then boom, first time doing this problem, by the way, actually true. And what's the time and space complexity? So it's going to be uh, log of x time complex time complexity, right? Because the number of operations is really going to be it's really just a uh, kind of a three pass, right? Because I think I think two string operates in linear time. But I have no idea to be honest. So it's probably a two or three pass, right? But uh, it's going to be log of x, right? Because our operations are linked to how many digits, right, are in the number. And you can get the number of digits in a number, right, by uh, using log of x, right? At the same time, right, we're going to be storing that same amount, number of digits, right, in x string, right? And so we're going to be using uh, log of x space as well. And so, boom. That is reverse integer.